Yesterday, there was uh, an international meeting on uh, simulation and healthcare uh, over at the uh, Ernest Morial Convention Center. And um, pretty interesting uh, new uh, development uh, announced as far as uh, healthcare treatment. And uh, we're very pleased to have with us uh, the CEO of uh, Sonosim. Uh, his name is uh, Dr. Eric Savitsky. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, what is uh, going on and some treatments that are now available that uh, could be a, a breakthrough and could make the uh, stethoscope a thing of the past. And uh, doctor, welcome to the program. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Hey, uh, thank you for joining us. So you are, are you still in New Orleans? Uh, you know, my team is in New Orleans. I've uh, made my way back to Los Angeles, but our team is uh, enjoying their, uh, their last day at the IMSH conference. Okay, very good. Tell us a little bit about the conference and uh, what you introduced there. Sure, yeah. The, you know, the conference, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to pull in you know, thousands of people around the, um, around the world to focus on simulation. So how you can make medicine safer through simulation-based practices, which um, you know, have varying definitions, but essentially all focused on making healthcare more efficient and safer uh, through the use of advanced technologies in the context of simulation. So uh, are you, uh, were you pleased with, uh, you did a, a demonstration uh, there at the conference? Sure, yeah. You know, the, the focus of our company and our efforts are to improve healthcare by accelerating the adoption of ultrasound. And ultrasound technology has been around for, for decades, and it has the potential uh, to replace the stethoscope or at least complement um, its use. Um, but for many years, it um, hasn't kind of achieved its potential for a variety of reasons, which I'd be happy to explain. And the technology that Sonosense created mm -hmm. has really made it easy for healthcare providers to learn ultrasound and to use it in day-to-day -day practice. Now, of and course, what, uh, we are very excited about. I remember uh, seeing ultrasound images of my children, and uh, that's, of course, I think how a lot of people um, are familiar with ultrasound, right? Sure. And, you know, I can put it in context. You know, everyone's um, kind of mental uh, construct for ultrasound is, you know, with obstetrics, but, uh, but ultrasound, you know, is and can be used in every facet of medicine and in many ways literally result in saving thousands of lives and billions of dollars. And I can give a couple contextual um, Yeah, please, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you, know, uh, you know, very simple uh, way of thinking about it is when you go into the hospital, uh, whether it's the emergency department or clinic, the nurses many times have to give you an IV and give you IV fluids, and that requires putting in a peripheral IV. When that's not possible at UCLA, many times um, you wind up getting a central line, which is a much larger needle and a much larger part of the body, a blood vessel in your neck potentially or in your groin, and the complications rates with putting in a central line is anywhere from 10 to 15%. And there's about 5 million of those lines put in um, in the United States. So if you think about 5 million procedures with a 15% 1-5 complication rate, and some of those complications can be fatal, they can be collapsed lungs, they can result in you staying in the hospital for a week. Um, if you're able to use ultrasound, and we do and many facilities do, you can decrease the need to actually put in a central line by 80%. So 8 out of 10 times, you wouldn't have to do that procedure that has a 15% complication rate um, if you're able to use ultrasound to find a very small vein that's not visible or palpable and guide a catheter in very safely into that peripheral vein. And once again, um, you know, obviating the need for a much more invasive procedure, it has a 15% complication rate. You multiply that times five, 5 million, you know, you can quickly save tens of billions of dollars a year by simply um, teaching and training healthcare providers to use ultrasound. How much more advanced is this equipment than the typical uh, ultrasound equipment that you see at uh, doctor's offices? Sure. So, you know, our, our product is, um, and forgive the ambulance in the background, our product isn't necessarily um, ultrasound technology. What it does is it trains you uh, to use ultrasound technology. Uh, what the unique features of it are is it actually uses real ultrasound data, um, and it uses uh, virtual patients, virtual anatomy, and you can use your own computer um, to kind of train yourself. So in some ways, if you think of IBM and, and Mac maybe, uh, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, it's basically creating an, an individualizing the learning experience. So you can, you know, you can train yourself at home on your own computer to do, um, you know, some very invasive things and also to make diagnoses uh, that previously would take decades to learn how to make because you're waiting for that patient to actually come into your hospital or in your emergency department. 
Here you can access a whole library of cases um, at your own time, anywhere, and actually learn uh, using your own computer. So it's really um, taking a lot of technologies that exist in many different forms, focus them on educating, training healthcare providers on ultrasound, with the hope of advancing healthcare. And so this is uh, really uh, the the focus here is uh, advancing the the training of doctors so that they uh, know how to use the, the the current equipment that they have better. Correct. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, the current equipment that they have, you know, literally could save thousands of lives, billions of dollars. And for many years, the ultrasound machines have been too big, they've been too expensive, and no one's known how to use them. Now, with modern technology, you know, ultrasound machines are the size of your cell phone. You know, the cost is. Now in the thousands of dollars and with competitive pressures mm-hmm. in the business world, they'll be um, below $1,000. So the residual um, hurdle to clear is how do you train people? How do you take cases where you're sitting around waiting for three years or four years to see enough of those? How do you get those in you know two months or three months in a sufficient time frame to train people? And, um, and then how do you actually teach people how to do certain procedures in a safe way without actually having to practice and learn on patients? And that's what our technology, which is computer-based technology, um, allows people to do. Uh, what kind of success are you having with it, Doctor? Uh, is this something uh, that you're now just introducing, or have you had this product for a while? Sure. Yeah, you know, our company um, arose out of a Department of Defense contract, and uh, we originally contracted uh, during, during Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom to actually help our you know, combat medics and advanced uh, care providers in the military um, how to use ultrasound and how to um, learn how to use ultrasound um, in combat settings. And uh, that was, you know, about five or six years ago when our company first got a start through a Department of Defense contract. It's since transitioned over the last three years into a, uh, a for-profit company. And, you know, we have literally hundreds of clients now from, you know, all the top leading institutions everywhere from Harvard through Yale through, um, through UCLA, Stanford. So all the leading uh, medical institutions have been rapid. Um, and early adopters of our technology. So we're very excited with the growth and with the positive feedback and, mm-hmm. and just looking at uh, really excited about being able to positively contribute in a very turbulent um, healthcare world right now where there's a lot of upheaval. Um, this is a very clear win-win, I think, from however you look at it, but improves uh, healthcare. It makes healthcare much more efficient. And at the end of the day, you know, I think patients mm-hmm. will benefit. So everyone at the company is very excited about making a uh, positive difference in a very uncertain time in terms of healthcare. Dr. Eric Savitsky is with us, CEO of uh, Sanosim. We're going to link to the uh, website. Uh, doctor was just in uh, New Orleans. His team is uh, still here for a conference over at the uh, Ernest Morial Convention Center. Is your uh, company still affiliated with the Department of Defense, uh, Doctor? Yeah, we're in the, uh, we're in the research phase of our de- Department of Defense contracts. So now we're, you know, we've, we've created the easiest way of teaching ultrasound and now what, uh, what the Department of Defense has tasked us with is figuring out ways of very effectively assessing proficiency. So now that we've created a technology that allows you to easily learn ultrasound, you have hundreds of people learning ultrasound, and what the administrators um, need to be able to do is to easily track proficiency to really assess who's learned it effectively, who needs refresher training. Right. So that is the, uh, the terminal phase of our work with the Department of Defense. And tell us how the stethoscope uh, is going to be phased out. Yeah, you know, I, I, I wouldn't go as far as um, saying it's phased out, but my wife always makes fun of me in terms of, uh, you know, years of gathering dust. It's, uh, there's 24 million, uh, 24 million people in the world that have stethoscopes. They replace it about every five or six years. Um, you know, a quick analogy is um, there was a, a study done that looked at a group of medical students. They um, compared the medical students to cardiologists, seasoned cardiologists with 10 years of experience, Cardiologists and anyone who uses a stethoscope listen to your heart. They hear kind of a musical rhythm. From that, they, um, they infer through years of experience what the valves are doing. They took medical students, gave them 18 hours of training on ultrasound, compared them to these seasoned cardiologists. And the medical students with 18 hours of ultrasound training outperformed um, a majority of these seasoned cardiologists because they could see and measure what was going on with a valve as opposed to having to transfer what a sound is into a visual and functional interpretation of what was wrong with the patient. So medical students with minimal knowledge are able to see and measure. And the, the best analogy is ultrasound allows you to see and measure. It takes the guessing out of it. Um, a stethoscope, um, if you're trained, you can hear and listen, and then you have to convert what those sounds are into uh, potential pathologies. So 
But if you I see it, I mean, you, you certainly have more data to work with, right? And, and better data. You can not only see it, you can hear it, and then you can guide instruments to it. So there's diagnostic uses when you're trying to figure out, you know, why does someone have a cough or shortness of breath or how mm. is someone's heart working? And then most importantly, from, from a patient care perspective, is when you're sticking a needle into the body, the difference is seeing that needle, seeing the target, seeing where it's going, seeing what to avoid, um, as opposed to blindly sticking a needle in right. and using surface landmarks to hopefully guide the needle in place. And, and that's from a therapeutic perspective where the billions of dollars and, and thousands of lives in the short term and immediate term that you can directly link to the use of ultrasound, that's where the you know the winning proposition is very, very easy well, to, it's, to prove. Well, it certainly seems common sense to me. It seems like it would be in advance. It would uh, benefit a lot of people, and hopefully it's going to be uh, universal pretty soon. Yeah, it, it, you know the, the three things. It's the uh, it's the physical footprint of the ultrasound machine. It's the cost of the ultrasound machine, and it's the training. And our company is focused on making the training and assessment component very easy. And the GEs of the world, and the Philips and the Siemens, you know, they're locked in battle as well as a lot of startups driving the cost of uh, ultrasound machines down and making them the size of your cell phone. You know, at some point, uh, probably in the next decade or two, it'll be a consumer device. Um, where, you know, you'll have one in your house and, and when, you know, someone in your family falls or hurts their arm, you can actually scan their bone and tell if it's a bruise or if it's a broken bone, actually. And so, then and then convey that information to someone you're talking to at the hospital and uh, that'll well, certainly yeah. assist, right? Well, when you have a $5,000 deductible and you've got a family of six, you know, and your three-year-old falls uh, on their, you know, outstretched arm and they're complaining of wrist pain, you know, you know, with that with that amount of a deductible, if the training and the technology um, suffices and you're comfortable enough with it, you literally can look at the cortex, the outer cortex of the bone. It's a very clear white line. If you see a, a little divot or a little interruption or irregularity in that white mm -hmm. line, that means you've got bone damage. And if it's a nice white line with no kind of swelling of the soft tissue, then you're most likely going to be fine. So there are many more uh, difficult-to-use um, technologies that made it in the consumer sector, such as AEDs. Um, you know, defibrillators, uh, much more technical, much more right. high risk. And uh, this is the type of technology that, um, you know, I think has, you know, unlimited potential uh, provided, um, you know, the cost, the Comes down. footprint, and the mm -hmm. training uh, allows people to use it. Hey, uh, doctor, fascinating information. I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for the work you're doing. And uh, certainly hope you enjoyed uh, New Orleans. And uh, hopefully we can have you back on uh, to talk about uh, what I think uh, is a very fascinating subject. All right, when we come back, we'll... Uh, do a, a short open line.